Hey guys, I wanted to make a video and the video I'm going to title what we owe to each other, which is a reference to a video that Tularian Community College made on Unsleeved Media. Now, passive aggressive is the name of the game. So when you make a video like this, you put in the comment section that although I'm making a video that is spiteful of this individual, please do not spite that individual. Now this is a common tactic used by pretty much every YouTuber uh, is to have something that says this video is not monetized nor sponsored in any way. I'm not sure who would want to sponsor a video like this, but okay. I refuse to profit off of drama and I sincerely hope this is both the first and last video of its kind on this channel. Do not send death threats or excessively hostile attacks to Jeremy of Unsleeve Media. It is not acceptable behavior against Christine. It is not acceptable behavior against myself. And this is what set Unsleeve Media on his, I guess, his carnage on Wedge. I think it is this provoking, this consistent prodding. Uh, instead of reaching out with him, like it's the same thing with Emma and Travis, right? It's let's try to get these people, let's try to get a ban, let's try to exclude this person from our community. And what that creates is it doesn't actually exclude a person. You can ban on sleep media for life, but he's still going to produce magic videos and his tone. But it, what it does do is it changes his tone. So I've been following uh, this kind of back and forward on um, healthcare issues. Uh, America does not have the best healthcare. That's probably not a understatement. That is definitely something that we don't have. Uh, like Canada, our neighbors to the north uh, have a much better system, in my opinion. But uh, we live in a. You have to live in reality. You cannot live in a bubble. And I feel like a lot of people like Wedge live in a bubble where I'll put it this way, not everyone has parents who will allow their 28 year old, 29 year old to live at home. And then also like, and then not everyone has like a wife who would want to live with the in-laws in their parents' basement, in the in-laws' basement. That's all kind of strange to me. Um, I love my parents and we live in two separate homes. My home is about as expensive as their home. And we live uh, ten, five, ten minutes away from each other, so we can grab dinner when we want. Uh, we're a very close knit family, and I've, you know, I've always felt like that was the way to go. Is I never wanted to stay at their home, right? That makes no sense. Um, I work super late. I would much rather have my own home, um, have all the animals you can fit in a home, and that will be it. But some people. Here's the scenario that I think is interesting. Some people, and it's related to this health insurance. I'm going to circle back, I promise. Um, when I hire entry-level workers, they, for the most part, live at home. Uh, we had Amy. She was 27. She had free associate degrees, fine arts, graphic design, and biology. She's doing fantastic now. She's a digital market media marketing manager of a very big company at this moment in time. Uh, but when I met her, she was living at home. And her, and obviously, when you're 27 living at home, it's very stressful. Uh, it's stressful for Amy. It's stressful for her parents. Uh, you know, parents, especially of the Asian variety, they really want their kids to do well. Um, every parent wants their kid to do well, but I think maybe Asian, I grew up in an Asian family, and maybe they're slightly more critical than another, more, they're definitely not relaxed about this situation. So, she worked hard. She had a plan. She moved out. She bought a new car. Her own car was like 1989 Nissan Ultima or something like that. Something ridiculous. I was like, wow, I don't know how you get to work every day. And she did it through hard work, right? Like, um, but she also wanted, one of her main objectives was she wanted to not live at home anymore. My feeling is she has a more difficult life than the mana source. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the personal things, but we are a very close uh, family at my company, and everyone has the veto right to, if they don't think that they're going to get along with this new hire, we don't hire them. 
um, we have a group interview and if somebody tells me in private that, hey, I don't think I want to get, I can get along with this person, we're not going to hire them because we go on, we play Pokemon and we have Nerf guns now. We don't actually have Nerf guns. We have, um, we went to the mall one day and we found these thingamajigs and they're like bow and arrows and stuff, but they're Nerf related. So they're not off brand, they're on brand Nerf. And now we just shoot each other with these darts all the time. So <laughs> that's what the office is like now. And then my dog Norman will occasionally eat all the darts, so then we'll have to order them on Amazon. But anyway, uh, it's the same with health insurance. Um, if someone is not willing to get health insurance, uh, even though they have a pre-existing conditioning, condition, are they paying their loans? Are they paying their student loans? Probably not, because if you get um, disability, you don't pay your student loans. That's uh, forgiven. But I don't know exactly how you... I've never had a friend who does that. So there are people who really have a drive uh, to do better, to be better, and then when they get to the top, they can give. Um, I like to give as much as I can, and sometimes I give too much. Uh, but that's the nature of what I want to accomplish in life. Um, that's what I think a very fulfilled life is. Um, I have probably a different definition than most people. But there's other people who are okay with where they are. And I don't know. I don't think that... Um, I am of the opinion that uh, some people in our community, they are takers and they will take every cent from you. And when it's time for them to help you, they won't, even if they wanted to help you, they're in no position to help you because they're not even in a position to help themselves. Yet they keep taking and taking and taking. And part of why I think that this game is declining is it used to be when I was a little kid, we would have a pool of cards and I would give cards to my friends. They would give them to me. We would lend each other games. Um, now that's not the community. You know, everyone is divided and everyone is looking out for themselves. And you rarely see acts of kindness, in my opinion. I still go to local game stores and people are not kind. Uh, people are not generous, and it is a me, 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 me culture where it's all about taking. Um, I know a lot of you will probably mention some of the good stuff Wedge has done. And yeah, sure, it's great. Um, it's fantastic that he does charity donations and he donates other people's stuff away uh, for fundraisers and stuff of that nature. But at the end of the day, uh, health care is a personal issue. It is an absolutely personal issue, uh, whether or not you get insurance, whether or not you don't. It is kind of a private personal issue until you bring it to the community. And a lot of you will ask, why does it matter that Unsleeve Media, um, why does it matter that, um, why does it matter to him and why does it matter to me that Wedge didn't get uh, health care um, and the community donated? It's their money, right? It's their money. My general understanding of psychology and giving and having volunteered since I was in elementary school, I used to volunteer at this uh, retirement home called Sunrise Retired Living. I used to call bingo numbers and play the piano. Is when you are so used to receiving, you have a very skewed perspective of reality. And in your little enchanted environment, it's okay for you not to have health insurance, um, even though you probably should get it today, because you will be taken care of. And the more often that your student loans are forgiven, the more often that your debt is forgiven, the more often that you get your Patreon dollars without producing a single video, um, the more used to it you get and you feel like you're entitled. So if you ask, how do people get entitlement um, it's because you know it's little kids and they finish in last place and they get a trophy and they get ice cream and they get the same exact reward as a person who worked and trained and worked hard all their life not all their lives they're little kids but they worked really hard to finish in first place you know the, the guy who's out there running laps when everyone else is eating like ice cream or mcdonald's 
in today's society, he gets the same medal as the person who finishes last or doesn't even finish. Uh, and that's what's happening here is you're encouraging behavior where I don't think you should be encouraging this behavior. And I honestly will tell you, I don't think it's helpful to wed um, because eventually the community won't be there for him and he'll be reliant on a system that no longer exists. I'm a huge proponent. Um, I save all my chains uh, in this little thing. I used to tweet about it, but you guys don't like that. I used to give, I used to, uh, when I was in San Francisco and I had more money, I would order the same meal I was eating and then give it to a homeless person and sit with him and talk with him because the t sitting and talking actually is probably more valuable. It's human interaction and encourages him maybe to get a job. Plus he has the same meal I do. So it's not like I gave him, I, I ate at this really nice restaurant and then I bought him McDonald's, right? I think that's disrespectful. Um, and that's just my opinion. You know, that's my opinion. Um, when I was in Houston, when we were playing Pokemon Go, we, Eric, who's my intern, we saw this guy and he was giving sandwiches to homeless people and he was giving sandwiches and, you know, talking to them and, you know, um, propping them up a little bit. I mean, on a Sunday, like it was like a hundred degrees outside. I was playing Pokemon Go with my team and we couldn't even last more than half an hour. Um, I guess the intern couldn't last half or an hour. That's who I want to be. Um, you... It's not the sandwich. Sandwich is nice. It's the encouragement. It's the, oh, you know, here's a shelter. Here's how you can turn your life around. If you become reliant on donations, eventually those donations will run out. That's just truth. That's reality. Tolarian used to rake in far more donations than he does now. That's why he has to do all those sponsorships now. Um, but eventually like i mean i it will be interesting in the next five years to see where uh, gofundmes go and kickstarters and um because i don't think that those programs are going to last very long there's a lot of fraud there's a lot of um you know we don't know where these donations are going to uh, legally there's a lot of gray area that they're operating in currently when someone promises X and there's no delivery and Kickstarter is not responsible for delivery, I think that will change in the future. Um, the legal landscape is getting harder on Uber, um, the rental of uh, apartments. What's that one? Bed and I want to say bed and bath, but that's a store, obviously. And yeah, so we'll see. We will see. Bye, guys.